Hey makers this is Truvin and in this episode I am going to talk about how you can design enterprise level solution for your power apps in power automate this is the most common question which is asked by many consultant many architects today i am going to share about my overall experience for designing many solution from different enterprise level applications so let me share my experience with you also if you haven't followed me on my instagram and twitter so far do follow me because these are the platform where i'm uploading short content on power platform so without further delay let's get started and talk about the overall enterprise level solution design the very first thing that we need to decide is we need to think about the different environment you need to think about your development environment test environment and your production environment this approach is best suitable where you have a very large application at the time you can create three different environment for three different purposes now once you created the environment after that you need to decide the strategy for your development now for development at this point many people are facing the problem most of the time due to lack of awareness what developers are doing is they started developing their power apps their power automate flow directly into that environment they are not following any proper mechanism for solution and packaging so here the second point comes into picture as a solution architect is to create a proper solution for your environment that will help you for strategic deployment moving forward so let's say for an example if you are a developer and you have started building the power apps and power automate first you need to create a solution inside your environment and then you need to add your power apps power automate custom connector everything into that solution so solution is like a container which covers everything even if you are creating your dataverse table add everything under your solution also when defining the solution make sure that you will create proper publisher publisher is something like let's say if you select the default cds publisher what happen here is it will add couple of prefix besides your power apps power automate dataverse table everywhere so let's say if your organization name is power platform trainings so you can define the proper abbreviation for your publisher like pt or something it's totally up to you what you want to define but it is the best practice to always use the publisher in the solution now you created the environment you created the solution now third thing comes up into picture when you are defining the power apps power automate and dataverse i am sharing some of the tips based on my experience so far so when you are defining any power apps make sure that uh, you follow proper naming conventions second thing don't use too many screens in your power apps that will reduce the performance of your app also make sure that you used proper naming convention for each of your control sometime what happen here is i am a developer i am developing the app i used all the default controls and all and i didn't rename any of the control sometime it's very confusing you know uh, when we have used couple of text boxes and drop downs into our formulas so it's always best practices to follow proper naming convention also one of the most important tip when you are showing the data in your grid make sure that you don't face any delegation problem you need to check the delegation according to your data source like let's say if you are using sharepoint you need to check out the what are the delegable function for sharepoint if you are using dataverse you need to check out what are the delegable function for dataverse and make sure that you never see delegation warning in your grid when you are defining something also you need to design the app in such a manner that proper archival flow has been placed let's say for an example you have some transactional data in your app and let's say every year many data are coming from end user now you need to decide like after 6 month or after 1 year some data will go to the archival process and based on the archival data you can just use for the reporting purpose that's how what happen here is it will reduce the data in the app which is connected to your actual data source so you need to think through about that thing as well 
Uh, also, one of the most important tip is use the environmental variable whenever it's possible. So, let's say for an example, if you are uh, defining some connection in your Power Apps, like with, with different data sources like SQL Server, MySQL, uh, let's say SharePoint and Dataverse, try to use environment variable for it. So that what happen here is sometime if there is a need to change the URL when you are using the SharePoint and you are just moving the things from one to another tenant at the time that will uh, reduce your effort. So try to use environment variable as well. Also, one of the most important thing for Power Apps is, you know, whenever, whenever you are writing some line of code, always make sure that you add comment that why that code is being used. This strategy is mostly useful, like let's say many developers are working and some developer left the organization. At the time, if the commenting has done properly, you know, this is very helpful for any organization. So make sure that you follow that. Now, let me just summarize the tips for Power Apps that I just shared. So proper naming convention, delegation warning, environment variable and proper commenting. These are some common tips you can follow. Obviously, there is a bunch of list you need to follow. But, uh, you know, th I just wanted to make this video short and sweet for enterprise grade level application. But, you know, if you need uh, to highlight on some specific point from my end, uh, just share that thing in the comment section. I will happy to create some another video on top of that. All right. Now, let me just share some common tips for Power Automate, which you need to follow. Make sure that whenever you create the Power Automate flow, you create those flow inside the solution that will help you for packaging moving forward. So make sure about that thing. Same tip over here as well. Use the environment variable, which is changed only from one environment to another environment that will uh, helpful to you. Third thing, commenting. So, you know, whenever you are using any type of action in your Power Automate flow, make sure that you just give the proper name for your action. Also, there is an option to add a comment for each individual action. So, make sure that uh, you add the proper commenting over there so the end user can understand, you know, this is something which is useful on this and this manner. Also, uh, it is recommended, like, let's say if your flow is very large and it has many business processes include inside your flow so it is recommended that you know you prepare some sort of documentation and store it to your uh, cloud location anywhere so what happened here is during the kt process or you know if the developer is changed and if you just wanted to transfer your knowledge that thing will helpful to you so follow that methodology for flow now uh, let me share a couple of things related to dataverse so let's say if you are using the Dataverse table uh, for an enterprise level application, make sure that uh, those tables are created inside the solution and uh, you know whatever the naming convention that you follow, uh, it is consistent throughout your all the tables. Also, while during the packaging, if you have used any relationships or let's say if any option sets or choice columns, make sure that all the dependencies has been added properly inside the solution. So that will not uh, throw you in an error at the end when you are deploying the solution from one environment to another environment. So you need to consider those points. Also, you need to decide the proper strategy for accesses for your environment. So this is the, uh, you know, most asked question uh, for any solution architect, the permissions. So you need to decide the proper uh, permission level for your applications. So let's say for an example, it's your duty as a solution architect that you need to decide that how many table you want to provide the access to some specific uh, role level of people. What type of access you want to provide? You want to provide write access, read access, what type of access? And according to that, you can decide the role management for your uh, environment. So you need to uh, decide, you, you can design your own custom role depending on your own custom requirement as well as uh, you need to uh, decide the app sharing mechanism for your enterprise level applications that you know uh, this is the app with how many people you wanted to share that app and uh, you can uh, define that using some sort of security group so just use the concept of security group add that same security group at environment level as well as uh, you know app level that will make your uh, process faster so you just uh, you just need to think about that strategy as well when you are designing the solution. So after security, the main thing comes up into picture that uh, packaging and deployment to the different across the environment.
so let's say once you are done with your app development once you have developed the proper permission levels uh, then it's time you know to publish all your customization from the solution so you just need to publish all the customization and after that you need to export your solution while you are exporting the solution there are two question comes up into mind that what to choose managed solution and unmanaged solution so let me just share couple of my experiences for managed and unmanaged so let's say if you have proper alm place for your organization that you know you have a very large application and once that deployment has happened now uh, you know the next iteration is something that you wanted to enhance some functionality and you wanted to enhance first into development and at some specific interval you wanted to release to production then i can say that you know just go with the managed solution so what happen here is when you use the managed solution you can't edit anything to the production environment it's not recommended there are some alternatives there but it's not recommended so always you need to follow dev to production that path so if your requirement is something that once you wanted to deploy your proper uh, stable solution to the production use the managed solution approach uh, and if you are designing some product and you wanted to deploy that to many environment at that time as well it's recommended to go with the managed solution but if i talk about some small project where the application is very small and you know there is no such risk of uh, production spoilation so at the time you can go with the unmanaged solution approach as well so let's say if you have a very small application and you just wanted to deploy it from one tenant to another tenant at the time you can use the unmanaged solution approach the reason is that like uh, sometime what happen here is i developed one leave application let's say in my environment i deploy that as a unmanaged package now let's say uh, i wanted to deploy it to the client's environment so I, I deployed it and after that i wanted to make some changes over there so at that time unmanaged solution would be the best because it provide you the flexibility for uh, making the power apps edit uh, flow edits and all so at that time always you need to go with the unmanaged solution so depending on your need you need to decide what you want if you don't wanna want to allow anyone to make any update after the production release then always go with the managed approach but if your requirement is something like there are many frequent changes many moving paces uh, many modules comes up into picture and you know your client need the instant release every time and uh, you know after uh, moving forward you know you think that you know there is no risk if you make directly changes into production then i can go with the unmanaged solution so it's totally depend on the need what we want right so de depending upon that you just need to decide your solution level strategy for managed and unmanaged solution and after all of this thing works at the end the thing is that you just need to import that package to your appropriate environment so once you import let's say from dev to production uh, you first exported as unmanaged or managed and now you are importing that to your target environment once you are uh, defining once you launch that to your target environment after that you need to manage the permissions as well to your target environment so you need to think through about the access and all of those things and also uh, you need to think through about how you will notify all the users about the new deployment and uh, you need to maintain the change log as well and uh, i would recommend like uh, let's say for an example once you go live just make the proper communication across the organization you know this is the app url uh, this is how you can access the app proper user guideline training material you can build up and uh, you know in your app you can create one type of icon for help and support and uh, just uh, provide some guidance to them uh you can just train them how to use the app and uh, you know uh, how to access the url properly if they face any kind of issue whom you need to contact and all so you need to think through about that strategy as well and once that's done uh what you can do is like uh, before rolling out the final confirmation email to every user uh, you just need to make sure that you make some proper testing to your production as well that uh, if anything uh, is not breaking up to any point so make sure that that testing also has been done properly and after that you can just send up the final uh, roll out email to all your end users so this is how the start to end enterprise level uh, application can be deployed 
sometimes it's totally depending on your app level which type of organization you are belonging upon based on that you need to define your strategy but this is the common path and you know uh, i have seen many times that many developers are making the mistake that you know they are doing the solution mechanism at last they are uh, developing every power apps power automate at the beginning independently and at last they are trying to add that into solution and that time they are facing many challenges and they are spending weeks of time just to make the proper packaging of the solution so to avoid all of those things i recommended to go started with the uh, best practices that will uh, reduce your effort at the end so that's it for overall journey from starting to end for enterprise grade level application development hope this video helps you and values your time if you find this video helpful make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe my channel and if you are looking for any consultancy connect me on my website and or write me at my email all the links are available at the channel home page you just need to visit my channel home page banner and uh, over there you will find all the links of my website my twitter my instagram my linkedin you can connect me through any of my social media handles i will happy to help you if you have any query with this this is ruvin signing off see you in the next session with some amazing content till then have a great day goodbye